We're going to look at secants and tangent lines. Now these are not to be confused with the secant and tangent trigonometric functions. These are almost always going to be preceded by the word line, or I should say followed by the word line. We'll look at secant line first. Now a secant line is a line, and here I have uh, the point slope form and the slope intercept form. Generally in calculus, I recommend using slope intercept form. It's a little bit more useful. Oh, sorry, point slope form, or the one I circled. Uh, you usually don't have the y-intercept, which is why I try to avoid the slope y-intercept form. So again, this is point slope form, and generally in calculus is going to be better. It, the, the secant line, it's a line that intersects the graph in two points, and these two points will have an xy value. So the first one here, I just called it x0, f of x0. Sometimes the f of x0 will be called y0, like before. So sometimes you're just given two x values, and you have to compute your y values by plugging them into the function. And the other one, similarly, x1, f of x1. All right, here's what it would look like. You have a function in black here. The secant line is in blue, and it touches the function in two points. Now it is possible that this function could curve back, could be curving back, and it's quite possible it intersects it. Wow, that's not the line I was looking for. It could intersect in other points, uh, but generally it just intersects in two points. There could be other points where it might intersect somewhere over here. They could cross again. That's fine. But it does need to intersect in two specific points. And that will usually be given to you in the problem. What you do need to do on any of these problems, you need to compute the slope and your slope, you compute it the same way you do average rate of change. It's going to be the two y values subtracted. So it's fx1 minus fx0 over x1 minus x0. Again, this is rate of change. Uh, if I use the y notation, it's y1 minus y0 over x1 minus x0. It's the regular slope form you've computed for a long time. Once you have that, you just plug into this first formula here and you already have x1 and y1. Just plug those values in. You just computed slope, and that's how you solve a, uh, find the equation of a secant line. So that's for secants, and again, two points is the key for a secant. Now we'll talk about tangent lines. Tangent lines are similar. They're a line that intersects a curve, but this time it does so in one point. And this point, we only have one point, so we'll use x naught, f of x naught. Of course, you could think of this as x naught, y naught. And we also need to compute the slope, but we do so in a different way. So if I zoom in over here to see what's going on, we have a function, this black curve here, and the, c the tangent line intersects in one point right here. If I zoom in, if I zoom in really far, uh, the black curve appears more like a straight line, and you'll notice the slope of my tangent line is exactly the same as the slope of the black curve at this point. If you move over a little bit and think about uh, this x value here, the slopes are slightly different, similar, but a little bit different. Same thing would happen if I looked on the other side of the intersection. Two similar points, the slopes would be slightly different, but still close. All right, how do we get the slope right here? So again, you usually want to go with the point slope form. And I have that right up here, y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Uh, in this case, we have y naught and x naught. So I'll use the point that we have, y naught, x naught. All right, we still have to compute m. So how do we get m? You're gonna compute m by using the difference quotient. Using the difference quotient. And remember the difference quotient is fx 
plus h minus fx over h and you have to plug in for your function and then you do need to cancel this h you need to uh, simplify simplify by canceling the h in the denominator um, eventually it will cancel out with any uh, with some of the h or maybe even all of the h's in the numerator and then so that's the first thing you would do the second thing you would do is uh, let h get very small and we'll do a few examples next and you'll see this uh, in context